All right. Hello, TwitchCon. What's up? Make some noise. I am Jaxler, and it is a privilege and honor to be opening GDQX with Pseudo Regalia. This is one of my favorite games of this past summer. It's an indie 3D Metroidvania with some of the coolest movement tech you have ever seen. This game's like six bucks on Steam. It's a complete steal, and hopefully in the course of the roughly next 12 to 13 minutes, I can maybe convince you. So we're going to be doing any percent. Goal of this run is just to beat the final boss as quickly as possible. I'm going to be needing to grab five major keys in order to do that. But other than that, anything's fair game. So, all right, I'm going to need a little help from the crowd. We're going to start counting on five, and then we're going to start the timer on go. Y'all ready? All right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Thanks, everybody. So this is Sybil. She is our playable character. Because this is a Metroidvania, we start with absolutely nothing. We can just jump and walk around. So in order to get all five of those major keys that we need to beat the game, we're actually going to only be grabbing four of the required power-ups in order to progress through here. The first one we're going to get is Dream Breaker. This is our primary weapon for the game. So the combat system kind of has an element to it similar to Hollow Knight, where when you damage enemies, there's a magic meter that fills up on the left-hand corner of the screen. And as that rises up in power, you get more buffs to your character. And so you can also like spend it on a heal as well, but we're not going to be doing that, hopefully. So there's going to be this little egg fellow right here. I'm going to smack him three times. That's going to give me a little extra meter. And as we're making our way up to Cage Room, this is where we're going to start to see the first trick of the run called a gainer. So a gainer is a backflip that sends you forward, which sounds a little weird, but trust me. I'm going to be doing an input where I put Sybil into a skid animation and then jump, which gives us sort of a backflip. And then I reverse the direction as soon as I press jump. This allows me to essentially get a high jump and skip a little of the platforming here. It's really important that I mention that because this gainer flip has a really interesting property to it where if you have any kind of momentum or speed going into it, you actually preserve that speed going into your airborne jump. And it can let you do some absolutely nasty stuff. So we're going to be getting our first major movement upgrade in just a moment, which is the slide. This is what we're going to be using to perform a really cool technique called slide ultras. So I'm going to do this slide. It's going to look like a Simon Belmont slide. I'm going to press jump to cancel the animation midway through. And then you're going to see me perform a gainer input at the end of that to carry the slide momentum into the air. And it's going to look a little bananas right here. Oh, yeah, baby. So that's going to let us skip that room right there. We're going to do a slide cancel off of that ledge and then bunny hop to preserve the speed. So once we get slide, we are off to the races here. We're going to be doing a bit of a weird route. You're going to see not a whole lot right now because you're supposed to have an upgrade here to be able to see in the dark. But luckily, I know where I'm going, so I don't need to be able to see in the dark. So we're going to get a ledge grab right here. One, two slides. Do another slide ultra. Ah, beefed it. Get me up here, please. Thank you. All right. And we're, the reason we're going this way in the first place, this is not at all possible. You're not supposed to be able to do this. The reason we're doing this is that at the end of Dilapidated Dungeon, there's a mini boss called Strong Eyes. We have to fight for a small key. By going through this sort of hidden back path through Underbelly, we can actually skip that mini boss fight, which we are kind of woefully underprepared for. So that lets us save a couple of minutes here. We're going to go for a specific setup. Ah, I beefed it. So was looking for a bunny hop right there to hopefully carry me over that gap. I'm trying to avoid ledge grabs as much as possible to keep up the momentum. This is a really cool room right here. We get a bunch of speed. And if I do my bunny hops correctly, we are going to go all the way to that doorway over there in the distance. Get this jump right here. Boom, here we go. And so we're going to do another slide cancel right there. And we are already at the end of the underbelly. So we basically went through that section backwards. And this is going to put us in empty bailey right by tower ruins. And so the whole purpose of this, as well as, you know, skipping strong eyes, is we're going to go grab a really broken upgrade called Cling Gem, which is sort of a wall ride ability. And it's really fun. And, you know, like I said, you should play this game because um, this game has a wall ride mechanic, and that's just cool. But the game sort of locks behind uh, this Cling Gem with a bunch of uh, required upgrades. But I can do slide ultras like that and skip all of the vertical movement tech I'm supposed to have lock unlocked at this point. And so this is kind of what I call the magic mile. We're going to do like six or seven slide ultras to do uh, the tower ascent right here. This is kind of a classic strat here. So I'm just going to shut up and let the magic happen. So there's number one. There's number two. We're getting number three for distance here. Number four is going to get up to here. This is the hard one. Got it. Nice. So that's number six. And so we got two more that we got to do. Cling gems on the other side of this area here. Oh, can I hit the swag strat? Oh, I hit it. Let's go. That's really hard. 
That's like a two frame window. That one's real bad. Oh, I hit that like once in practice and I was just like, God, please let me hit that. Okay, sweet. So that's gonna get us Cling Gem right there. And Cling Gem is up there with Slide as the most broken upgrades in the game. It's gonna let us do some wall clips and some really goofy vertical momentum stuff. I'm gonna do what's called a knee slide right here. Ah, beefed it. So what I'm looking for is a slide A, slide A input in such a way where it kind of glitches uh, Sybil's animation state machine, which means that she gets put in this weird, like, sort of half knee slide animation. And if I do that properly, it'll actually allow me to immediately jump cancel and get the maximum amount of speed potential out of an individual slide input. So that's a slide, uh, that's a knee slide right there. It's gonna let me get to full speed as we make our way through to indignation here. So I'm gonna be doing a little platforming. We're just coming out of our way here for a combat upgrade. So Bobby, if you got a message, this would be a great time for it. Absolutely, thank you so much. How about we start this off with a $100 donation from Zenny that says, let's go, Chaxler. Much love from the pseudo regalia community. Good luck again, and here's to some forgiving princess RNG. <laughs> thank you, Zenny. Zenny knows exactly what I'm aiming for here. So we're gonna use this small key that we picked up on the way to indignation to get us to keep. And so keep, we're going to go for our first out of bounds here. There's just a little hole in the ceiling right here that we can wall glide up. And then I'm gonna do two cling wall clips here. All right, I'm gonna actually use my keyboard for this first one right here, because it makes the setup free. Oh, oh, that was almost really bad. Oh, that's really bad, okay. I was holding the wrong button, so we're gonna void out here. <laughs> um, so I accidentally hit the backflip button, which means you die. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and set that one up again right here. So I'm doing an ultra because otherwise I would just fall through the ceiling. And then here we go. Let's see if we get this. Need a camera angle. Oh, okay, saved. This is a little finicky sometimes. There we go. So that's the first one. And then if I just wall run at this wall, she pops right through. And that's gonna let us hit these two levers to get to keep key early. There we go. Whew, okay. Usually doesn't go that bad, but you know what? We'll take it. All right, so we're gonna do a couple more knee slides here. We're gonna do uh, go ahead and grab keep key and make our way to underbelly key. We've got all four of the upgrades that we really need to be able to glitch our way to the rest of the major keys. So while I make my way down to underbelly, uh, Bobby, you've got room for another message here. Absolutely. How about this $50 donation from Michael K that says, I'm proud and happy to have one of our many great runners show off our lovely goat bunny cat lady to the big stage. Good luck, Jaxler, and may your ultra jumps be consistent and your princess RNG go perfect. I wish. Uh, shout out to Michael, uh, one of the SRC mods for this game. So we're gonna be heading into underbelly. So normally in order to get through this entrance, we're intended to have a move called Sunsetter, which is kind of like a ground pound stomp. But instead I can do a reverse cling clip just like that and I just slide right, right through no biggie. All right, gonna do an ultra out of my bunny hops right there. It just gets me across a little bit safer. Gotta be a little bit careful with all the enemies. Um, if you die, you go back to your last safe crystal that you hit. So I hit an extra one there on the way for safety. And here comes probably the one I'm the most, second most worried about, which is underbelly key. So that part's not the worst. This is the hard part. I need really good distance here. Should be good. Wall cling, wall grab, nice, okay. So we do a slide ultra into two wall grabs, grab the key, fall into the pit. That hazard warps us back to the start of the room and that's our next major key, baby. All right, so we are not out of the woods yet. Two of the major keys left are kind of just on the way, so they're not that bad. The one I'm really worried about is theater. Um, theater is by far the run killer in this, in any category, uh, let alone any percent. And that's because it's like this, you know, I would call, I guess, I don't know how you call it high level, but it's just like, it's a tough area of the game to beat casually. You know, there are a lot of obstacles. Uh, so right there, you saw me do something called a wall cling re-grab. So if you're go wall cling into a 90 degree corner and you jump and then reinitiate wall cling again, very quickly, you can actually re-grab the same wall, but you won't go anywhere because you're stuffed into the 90 degree corner. So because of that, um, as long as you still have wall curling resources, you can actually use that to gain height in ways you're not supposed to be able to. And that's gonna be something really important for when I get into theater. The way theater is set up is there are three switches that we need to hit in middle, left, and right hallways in order to unlock the door to the key. So this first bit here, I'm on a bit of a cycle because there's a swinging ax room that starts as soon as you load this level. So we're gonna bunny hop here, gonna do slide ultra right here, wall ride one, wall ride two, wall ride three, there we go. Read the ax room, 
We're gonna go up top here. This is a bit safer because all the axes up here are in view at all times. And then this is one of my favorite rooms. We're gonna do slide ultra up to the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. Grab the ledge and we're in middle switch right now. So we just skipped several rooms by doing that. Gonna set up a knee slide and then bunny hop, hit the switch. And here's another couple uh, clean clips. We're gonna skip all the rooms of the theater by just clipping through the wall. And then if I vibe hard enough, I will fall through into the goop, just like that. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna see if I can't get the hard strat here. It'd be nice if I get it, but never lucky. Okay, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna get Sybil to fall into the hallway so that she doesn't void out. That gets us theater key, and that is a sigh of relief for me because that part's really hard. Awesome, so we're gonna do a wall ride right here. Let go, not jump, and then I can re-grab the wall on the other side of that 90 degree corner. That's something we see a lot in other categories like Hundo. Um, but there's kind of a good spot that like I started doing a long, long time ago. All right, so we got two more keys going on. We're gonna get Bailey key next. Oh, wait, I forgot about this room. All right, backing up a little bit. We're gonna do an ultra, immediately turn it around 180. Boom, slide cancel off of here. And then I set up a knee slide and that takes us all the way back to empty Bailey. So the boss story for the final boss of the game is at the top of Tower Remains, which is where we got uh, the wall cling ability, right? So all we need to do is grab the key that's here, which happens to be up here. Two, three, four, five, six. Over the wall, just like that. Easy peasy. Oh, I'm gonna miss that. All right, backup time. Improvise. Grab the wall, good, okay. So we're gonna grab this one. Set up for another slide ultra. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that takes us all the way to the top of this bridge area right here, skipping like all the like unnecessary platforming and empty Bailey there. Awesome, awesome. So our last major key is right by the boss door as well. Very, very convenient for me. So while we're on our way up here, Bobby, this is probably your last chance for a message. Absolutely, and there's a marching band out here for you. I think you're the first oh runner gosh. with a marching band. <laughs> uh, we have a $25 donation from Corundum Core that says, Hey, bud, Ruby here. Congrats on being the opener for a charity I know is really important to you. Shout out to the SRROC crew. Yeah, huge shout out to Speedruns Rochester. Shout out to Ruby, one of my best friends. Love you so much. Thank you for donating. All right, we've got a couple more strats here. So there's a couple of like hallways and rooms here where you're intended to like learn how to use wall cling. But I'm gonna set up my camera for a max height slight ultra there. And if I nail it, I can catch this wall right right here. This takes me to the pole, to the final bit of the area right here. And now we, I love this setup. Do a sli uh, knee slide into the key and then you backflip out of it. One of my favorite strats. It's always an instant classic to me. All right, and we didn't get the soft lock. Excellent. Sometimes that cutscene goes to darkness and you just lose a minute. So glad that didn't happen. Um, all right, so we're going in the princess. This is pro like even compared to all the movement stuff, this is probably the most dangerous part of the run. Uh, princess is very deadly. She has like four or five different attacks they can do at random. And so I need to be able to react at will. So what I'm gonna do is smack her just like that. I'm gonna hold target so I can keep track of where she is. One, two, one, two, three. That's the pattern I wanna be going for. Now I gotta react. So this attack, I jump, I get a free three hit combo. And now I'm just going on and reacting here. If she teleports far away like that, that means she's gonna teleport again later, so that's why I don't close the gap. All right. So based on the animations that she's doing, that's how I'm able to tell what attack she's gonna do. All right, we're getting this attack again. This is a really good attack for us if she commits to the attack early. That's the halfway mark sound. Oh, she gave us ball, okay. One, two, one, two, three. You gotta play this a little bit safe here. Two. One, two, three. I thought that was the game audio. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right. All right, no I gotta play it a little safe here. One, two, one, two, three. Time is coming up soon. It's gonna be on final hit. Oh, you gave me the Beyblade? Oh, come on. I was, I was almost like, oh my goodness, she finally didn't give me the Beyblade attack. That's her slowest attack. All right, should be this cycle, hopefully. Time. All right, I want to see what my final time was. Had a goal coming into this. All right, mid-13, sweet. All right, that's pretty good. Um, so that's about a minute off of my PB, so I will take it. Not, I'm not gonna complain about being six and a half minutes under estimate. Um, but yeah, that was pseudo regalia any percent. Uh, if this looked at all cool to you, please get this game. It is like $6 on Steam. It is a giant steal. All right, 1329 IGT. I will take that to the bank. Okay, <sighs> okay. 
Calm down. <laughs> a lot of stress and nerves going into this. Um, wanted to try to self-commentate a GDQ run, so I'm really happy with how this went. I want to thank the whole Pseudo Regalia community for not just supporting me, but for supporting all the runners. I want to shout out Thulius. I want to shout out Outlier, Yoshichi, uh, Killing Pepsi, all of my friends. I want to shout out the Rando crew, so like Skate, Spuds, love y'all too. And I also want to shout out Ritz, who is the developer of this game and made this as kind of almost a solo effort. Uh, I think there were other people involved, but like this is, this is Ritz's baby, and I'm so glad to be able to have the honor not to only show this game off to y'all, because this game freaking rules, um, but also just to be able to open an event like this. I never thought I would ever be in a position to be able to do that, so I'm just very grateful. Um, but yeah, uh, like my friend Ruby mentioned, uh, please uh, continue donating. Uh, the cause is really important to me. I'm, I'm a type one diabetic, so any support that we can give towards uh, like the disability community, disabled people community, super important to me. So I just wanna thank GDQ for supporting that cause, and I wanna thank them for letting me have this opportunity as well. So, all right, I'm gonna get out of here now <laughs> because I'm a little overwhelmed, but uh, I'll just say, if you want to catch more weird speedruns that you haven't seen before, uh, I stream at twitch.tv slash jaxor1. And I want to shout out everyone here is in the crowd to watch this live. Y'all are the best. Thank you for being here. Shout out to, uh, this is Gibby, by the way. He's my co-commentator. We love him. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to sign off, everybody. we got a lot of great runs this weekend. Make sure you don't tune out. This is going to be a great weekend. Thank you all for tuning in to GDQX. See you all for the next run. Take it easy, everybody. All right, let's give it up one more time for Jaxler. And welcome everybody to Games Done Quick Express live from TwitchCon at the Las Vegas Convention Center. My name is Bobby Blackwolf. I am thrilled and honored to be your host, the opener host of the marathon. And I'm also thrilled and honored to read this $25 donation from Camlin that says GG's on the run, Jax. We are going to take a quick break, so go ahead and get started on the hydrating, on uh, stretching your legs, and we will be right back. Don't close that tab. <laughs> oh, yeah, these incentives are great. Oh, it's a hot mic. It's, it's us. Other people went out to go hydrate. So this, this is like secret club. This is, this is just, just you and me. Hey, so if you're, if you're still here, what I want you to do is help me hype up this incentive that we got for the run after Mario Golf. We've got Viewfinder coming up. And one of my favorite social media accounts is Can You Pet the Dog? But I'm a cat person. So we have an incentive to pet the cat in Viewfinder. Bobby Berm's gonna be running this great puzzle game, and there's a cat, and for every $500 that we raise, we're gonna make Bobby pet that cat, because that cat deserves pets. We are already 44% of the way to that first pet. I want you to help me chat, help tell people that they should donate for this. Just like Princess Peach did. Princess Peach donated $50 saying, Always pet the cat. So thrilled to be donating to Able Gamers, an organization allied, uh, aligned with my own passions for accessibility and inclusivity in gaming. Love you good folks and all the work you do for the gaming community. Thank you so much for that. And so when you do donate, when you go to the donate page, once you put in your amount, please be sure to select the incentive. And right now, the one incentive we have open right now is for Viewfinder. We have a $25 donation from Anonymous with no comment, but thank you so much. Every little bit helps Able Gamers. And if you didn't hear the opening segment about who Able Gamers are, Able Gamers it, uh, enables players with disabilities to participate in the video game worlds we love. They do a lot, but they do things like having peer counseling, a peer counseling team that consists of players with disabilities and occupational professionals who work one-on-one -on -one 
with players with disabilities to help them find the most accessible and comfortable gaming setup for each individual. They've been doing a lot of great work for a long time, and I am so thrilled to be here to help raise money for Able Gamers. We have a $50 donation from Ball that says, surprise GDQ, I got time, do go on. Live events are challenging already, but doing one at TwitchCon seems extra interesting. Shout outs to all the busy staff working behind the scenes to make this happen. Yes, thank you so much. And yes, this is, this is, this is interesting. We are at TwitchCon. We are in the Las, Las Vegas Convention Center. We uh, had a marching band in the lobby. We are just to the left of the main entrance. Uh, so if you are coming into TwitchCon at any point this weekend, when you go in the main entrance, make a left. That's where we are. Uh, and come, we're going to have some great speed runs today, tomorrow, and on Sunday. So if you are just joining us, this is Games Done Quick Express live from TwitchCon at the Las Vegas Convention Center. We're so thrilled to have you here. Coming up next is Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. The category is actually all birdies badges. So we're gonna be playing golf, we're gonna be getting birdies or better as quick as we can. So it's both speed and precision. I don't know if there's a green jacket involved. I just thought of that off the top of my head. The runners off to my left just gave me a look going, what are you talking about? We have a $20 donation from Rebecca Celeste that says, keep it up and pet the cat. That's right, that is the incentive we have for Viewfinder, which is coming up after Mario Golf. Viewfinder, it's an amazing puzzle game. Bobby Burns gonna be running it. We're gonna make Bobby pet the cat for every $500 that y'all donate. Right now, we are 59% of the way to the first pet, but it doesn't end there. Keep donating for more pets. I also want to say that there are prizes for this. This wouldn't be a Games Done Quick without prizes. You'll get to see some of the prizes a little bit later on this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. But if you get or $150 total donations throughout the entire weekend, there's this Kingdom Hearts chainmail inlay. I know I'm spoiling it a little bit. I mean, it's on the website and everything, but you'll get to see it soon on camera. It looks amazing. Once again, I want to welcome everybody to Games Done Quick Express here at TwitchCon, just to the left of the main entrance, here in the rush of people at 10 o'clock Pacific when the doors open. That was something. We got a lot of great speed runs coming later today as well. One I'm looking forward to is a little bit later on, Octopath Traveler 2. I've been playing through this casually. And uh, we're not doing any percent. We're doing Galdera. So it's one of the optional bosses getting to Galdera. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a GDQ with a, without a Souls game. Dark Souls is going to be... Wrapping up today, all bosses. So once again, I will say that the next run that we're going to be having, it's Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Blue Candy is going to be getting all of the birdie badges. I'm told we do not have a green jacket to give Blue Candy when 
they get all the birdie badges. I'm kind of disappointed. So we are here benefiting Able Gamers. One of the things that I always like that Able Gamers does is they have developer support. They work alongside game developers to help ensure that players with disabilities are able to enjoy the same video games as everyone else. So they have an accessible player experience. And this is a resource created by Able Gamers uh, and the input of over 500 players with disabilities to help developers make accessible games by teaching developers the challenges of playing with a disability and then getting out of the way to let developers do what they do best, create games. I personally have been really happy to see all the accessibility options that have been in modern games and developers that have. And, and I also want to shout out all the project managers and product owners. I know I'm using software terms, but a lot of times the accessibility options are nice to have in a project management sense. Uh, and so they deprioritize them. But Able Gamers has helped developers come to the realization that they should actually prioritize accessibility for the launch of the game. And I think that that's a, an amazing cultural shift that's been going on in the game industry. And thank you so much for Able Gamers. And thank you to the developers for being open to, uh, to the advice given by uh, disabled gamers everywhere. And I am now told that it is now time for Mario Golf Toadstool Tour Blue Candy. Show us how it's done. 